The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. Unique New York. Unique New York. Us, uh, dudes, and dudettes, and all of my friends, welcome. Hello and welcome, welcome and hello to Sheep's Clothing, episode fucking, like, 38 or some shit. I can't even believe that we've done this many episodes so far. Um, yeah, so tonight on Sheep's Clothing, um, sadly, my co-host Dylan will not be here with me tonight. He has a case of the sniffles. Um, I do say, I have to say that it's kind of strange to do these casts without Dylan because as much as I do my review videos and I'm talking to a, a fucking camera and there's nobody else in the room, it's still kind of strange just to look at my computer and talk like I'm talking to a person. <clears throat> well, um, this week we'll be joined by... Maya of the Cheeseburger Picnic um, was also in a band, a sludge band called uh, Bong Lord, and I have to say that I'm absolutely stoked that I happened to, to stumble across this music. It is everything that I desired in the year, uh, like, 2002. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, if you're into this... Uh, you know, the MySpacey grind, the, uh, well, if you're watching this show, then you're obviously into the style of music I'm talking about. Um, Great Redneck Hope Style, Sawtooth Grin, um, you know, just that really techie, spazzy, really, really fast insanity. And I personally can't get enough of that style of music. Um, I would listen to that over anything that's being put out nowadays, and it's kind of sad to see such a drain on this you know, musical genre. Um, for me, it's... I've been listening to the same bands for the last 10 years, and I don't like change. I do not like it. Um, so yeah, usually our podcasts are about an hour and a half, two hours long. Um, if you guys are new and you guys don't know, I'm kind of catching you up on things. Um, I know that it's not likely that everybody here is going to sit here for two hours, but... Stay and watch as long as possible because everybody tends to go a little crazy and it gets weird sometimes. And it's fun to watch other people's uncomfortability, I suppose. Um, a couple things I want to get into before I bring Maya out. Um, if you have a chance, go check out our YouTube. Um, on our YouTube, there's a video labeled Math Mail Monday Giveaway. Um, if you guys don't know, on this channel I like to do giveaways. I like to try to get bands to send me merch. Um, it's not only beneficial to myself because I, I pass the, the prize on to you. And I'm not going to lie and say... Sorry, I'm reading comments. <laughs> uh, noise core, yeah, I've heard noise core. I've heard, um, spaz core. Um, I kind of coined the term MySpace grind. That's just what I've always called it. And when I talk with my friends, everybody knows what I'm talking about just because we found all these bands on MySpace. And I dearly miss MySpace. And I would like to start a group called the MySpace Revival Group and maybe start like a little MySpace on Facebook, which would be amazing. Idea that I'm not going to do so somebody else steal it and do it for me. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so like I said, Dylan's not going to be here. Uh, I was talking about the giveaway. Um, go on to our YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash sheepsxclothing. Watch our awesome videos. There's a ton of them. I do vinyl reviews and also the the video I'm talking about. Sorry, I keep getting off track. It's hard when Dylan's not here. Um, basically, I'm giving away a bunch of fucking shit that I got from awesome people. And you're going to want this stuff because it's... Either a very rare vinyl, like one of one hundred. Um, it, it's it's rare vinyl. It's stickers, um, you know, shirts, anything that I could pick up from these guys. And um, 
so yeah, all you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube, and you're automatically entered f indefinitely for life. Um, anytime I do a video, uh, a video thing, <laughs> rest in peace, Dylan. Um, anytime I do a video uh, giveaway, sorry, I, I, I'm fucking losing trip my mind. Um, anytime that I do a giveaway, I'm going to always grab subscribers from one of the places we have subscribers to do that video. Um, to do that giveaway, sorry. And just by subscribing one time, you know, you have infinite chances to win amazing merch. You could win twice, shit. I don't know. It's all random. So, um, next week, we will be, if you have heard Maya's music and you like it, then you'll definitely love See You Space Cowboy. Um, it's a little bit more sassy. Um, I've heard they've coined the term, like, sass grind, which is really awesome. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so, uh, check them out if you like, uh, heavy, heavy, low, low style music. It's good stuff. Um, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, uh, after that, next, the following Sunday, we will have, uh, Gift from God, a member of Gift from God on. Um, I just stumbled across them as well, and they're fucking really awesome so that's why i'm doing an interview sorry that i'm saying um so much this is really really difficult to talk consecutively and we're gonna get through this together guys so i think that's all the podcast news um oh yeah sorry one more thing we're gonna start doing advertising on our show so if you guys have something that you're passionate about maybe it's a business maybe it's an art project maybe it's you know whatever the fuck maybe it's your mom owns a candle shop and you want to fucking, you know, get your mom some more fucking business or something. Hit us up and we'll start doing, um, we're going to start doing advertisement and it'll give you the chance to put your logo on our flyers, which are seen by tons of people. Uh, either that, or you can do like a spoken word advertisement, which will be around forever on our band camp, which is all just audio. If you want to just listen to this audio and not look at my ugly face, go to band camp. Um, sorry about the ums. I gotta fucking nip that in the butt. I don't know. What the fuck? Uh, yes, Dylan. I am the Kava champ. This is gonna be really difficult for me to field, um, questions off Facebook Live by myself as well. Yeah, there you go. That's the best quote I've ever seen from anyone. Get your mom some fucking business. Sheep's clothing. Alright, so, uh... Maya, are you ready? Let me know in the comments if you're ready, because I see that you're watching. Have a little toot on my vape ski. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys... Make sure that you share this video, because I'm sure that if you're friends with Maya, she would absolutely love to be this to be seen by more people, and doesn't hurt us as well. Also, if you have questions, make sure to leave them in the comments because then that makes it easier on me and I don't have to come up with all these questions. All right, so let me give Maya a jingle here. Well, hello. Are you hello. there? Can you hear me? Well. Why does this always happen? <laughs> so Hello. difficult. Hello. Howdy. Alright, let me get you on screen here. There we go. So, Maya, why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself? Alright. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Maya. Um, I am a person from New York. Grew up in New York. <laughs> I live in Michigan currently in Ann Arbor. Uh, I guess I I put out the C. The, no, I'm not in the C Space Cowboy. Uh, the cheeseburger. <laughs> I put out the cheeseburger picnic release a couple weeks ago. Um, and I also do. I did Good Think as a project. I played guitar in Youth Novel. Um, vampires. I played guitar and did vocals in. Play guitar in a band called Bonzo. Uh, just a bunch of different things with a bunch of different friends um, in, in the Ann Arbor area. 
Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, did you did you like New York better than Ann Arbor, or do you like Ann Arbor no. better than New York? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> oh. Uh, I really. Oh, hold on. Audio is being weird. Okay, sorry. I'm good now. Okay, so um, what what was the music scene like in New York? Um. The New York music scene was important to me when I was in high school growing up because I was a lot more into, like, prog metal, like real Dream Theater type shit and Dream Theaters from Long Island. Um, so I grew up going to, like... I, I, the first shows I went to were right around when the whole Gent thing started. Yeah. And that, that, that was an early thing for me as well. Um, though there weren't really any of those kinds of bands in, in Long Island, but... um. I would go to this band called Cryptodura, which is still a really great prog metal band from uh, from Long Island. They have that uh, convergy between the buried and uh, East of the Wall kind of sound. I think they did a split with East of the Wall too. Um, and yeah, that that was like my first real exposure to like heavy live music and that like band, seeing bands like them, Moon Tooth, FX Zero. Um, that uh, really made me really want to play in a heavy band, which I haven't really done like in a real band setting to this day. But uh, you know, right on. Um, turn the audio down on your Facebook Live, whatever you're watching that on. Yeah, I, I did. I turned that off. Or is, is there some kind of a uh, feedback or something going on? Yeah, when I was speaking, I could hear myself, but it, it doesn't appear to be doing it now. Um, okay. <clears throat> so. I'm having a little issue seeing all the, the Facebook Live comments because I have to click away from it and then come back to it. Okay. Um, if you could keep your eye on them and if you see one that's interesting to you to answer, just interrupt, answer the question. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, let me bring so that far, back up. So far, the best one I see is from Eric and it says, what is your favorite dumb thing? <laughs> uh, I know that there, there's a specific answer he's trying to field for me. And I will go ahead and say that a uh, good think is really dumb. <laughs> I also saw one on Facebook. Uh, actually, yeah, you posted it. it says, What's your favorite tree nuts? <laughs> uh, my favorite tree nuts are walnuts. Right on. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk oh, about Joe Graziano's Graziano's in the comments. comments. Hi, Joe. <clears throat> let's talk a little bit uh, music, and then we'll get into some other stuff. Um, so uh, the project Bong Lord. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you were into uh, stoner metal more so than this techie grindy stuff, or was that uh, like your friends wanted to play with you, or what? So, Bonglord actually is a very interesting project. Um, I have this friend named Jack Kim. He is uh, a Korean citizen. Um, he spent a lot, um, and all Korean male citizens have to serve time in the Korean army. So, um, while he was there, he got really into stoner doom metal, and he didn't have any like real access to instruments and stuff. But he had one guitar um, that was like in this main computer area for some reason. And so all the songs that are on that uh, album, he wrote while he was in the Korean army, and he didn't have any way to record them or anything, so he just memorized all of them. And when he told me about that and showed me the song, it was like I have to be a part of this, like. I just, I just thought it was so cool, um, so I helped. I, I played guitar on the album and recorded it, and it was a really fun time. Um, I I enjoy doom metal. I don't listen to it really as much as Jack does, but um, it was a very fun project to do for sure. Got to pull guitar solos for the first time in a while. Right on. Um, everybody's saying that we're having some audio issues, and I don't. I don't know if they're coming on my end or your end. Do, we, do you have anything else going on over there, or are you just on your computer? Um, I, it's, it's probably, probably just... Okay, okay well, I'm going to have, have to put on headphones, headphones probably. probably. Hold, Hold on a sec. <clears throat> this, this is, is probably, probably better, better, right? I'm sure. I can't hear it, so comments, tell us if that solved the issue. Um, yeah, so there's like a, a little bit of delay. Okay. Well, well, it was, was probably, probably. I don't know why I didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> okay. So, so that's, that's probably better. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Um, 
yeah this is this is the beauty of doing live interviews <laughs> you have to deal with all this stuff and everybody yeah. gets to see you dealing with it mm -hmm. um so like i said yeah if there's any troubles guys let us know in the comments so we can try to correct that for you oh. and make this no listenable. change no change Maybe if I turn on the game on my mic, is that any better? Let us know, guys. Because <laughs> I can't hear myself, obviously. Um, yeah, I only have audio coming out of my headphones, and so there's no way that they could it would pick up on anything else. <laughs> they just said we'll deal. Let me try to listen uh, to it online. I'm still here. I'm trying yeah. to. I'm 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 listening to the delayed stream. I I actually don't hear what they're talking about. Is it better? I don't know. I don't know. My my live stream isn't even loading on my phone. So <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on. Sorry for the dead air, guys. We're gonna figure uh -huh. this out. I promise. Okay. I think I think it seems to be better now. All right. Uh, so <laughs> what were we discussing? <laughs> uh, Bong lost. Lord. Okay, yeah. Well, so well. did uh, did Bong Lord ever put out anything like uh, album wise? Yeah, we put out a. Uh, well, I saw you shared uh, the album. Earlier. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just like a, a really good demo, <laughs> or if you guys actually put out albums. Yeah, I, uh, did. Did you share the the Bong Lord Bandcamp link, or just straight from the music is really dumb page? Uh, the the music is really dumb page. Okay, yeah, I just have one of the songs from that album on there. Um, but there is the full album. I'll link to it in the comments right now. Excellent. Um, and yeah, there's four songs. It's about a twenty-five minute album, I think. Yeah. So, and, um, how long did you play with them? Are do you, are you still currently playing with them? Uh, Jack actually had to move back to Korea, so the band's pretty much done. Um, because he wrote all the songs and did vocals and played bass. Um, but that was, that was a band for, like, maybe half a year. We spent a fair amount of time mixing and working on the album and played a couple shows. Um, the drummer who played on that album, uh, was, is also the drummer for my band Bonzo and played drums on one of the Youth Metal albums. So, the, the Ann Arbor scene that I'm involved in, or at least just the people I play with, all kind of just play in the same bands together, too. Yeah, it seems to be that way in a lot of different areas. Like, uh, it, it's so crazy from just doing this show. Like, I'll be like, I'll be set out to, like, find this one band, and then I'll find somebody from the band. And, see, this is all difficult for me because, for me, this whole genre was basically just MP3 files on my computer. Like, that's all <laughs> they were. And maybe, you know, I'd see a couple pictures on MySpace, but I didn't, like, lurk these people out and find who they were or anything or care to in, even enough to find out about these people. I just listened to the music i liked it and then i listened to it for like 10 15 years so mm -hmm. now it's it's to the point where i'm like trying to dig up all these people and find them and i don't know who any of them are and i find out that like half of them all played in the same bands which it, it actually like <laughs> it really limits our um ability to do interviews on particular bands because it's like oh i'll interview like uh for instance i, I interviewed uh derek vasconi from uh from our second story window yeah. And then Paul from Robinson, I found out that he was in From a Second Story Window, and now he wants to do a From a Second Story Window episode. Was he really? I had no idea. Yeah, I guess, I, oh, I don't know cool. if he replaced Derek or if Derek replaced him, I'm not exactly sure. But I know that that was the case. Um, That's cool. <clears throat> so yeah, we're working on bringing a, uh, from another From a Second Story Window interview, so <laughs> perspective from the rest of the band, the band and not just Derek's, I suppose. Oh yeah. Dude, he was the nicest guy in the world. I've never, I've never met someone so. Oh nice. yeah, that's so cool. Also, uh, from a second story window, is literally the best metalcore band of all time. So. Uh, they're good. They're good. <laughs> we'll just say that. It, it was right. funny because, in, actually, in that interview, I was like, he's like, basically, the reason Robinson broke up was because Paul wanted to go to from a second story window, and they just were kind of it just kind of died out, and I just kind of like looked at him and I was like, 
dude, you realize that Robinson is a way better band <laughs> than from a second story window. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they're very different bands, but I, I probably would agree with you there as well. And we all had a chuckle. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I wish my phone was a little faster. This is really killing me right now. <laughs> no problem. Um, so are you working on anything new right now, or are you just going to kind of go with the cheeseburger picnic? Um... In terms of the cheeseburger picnic, I, I wasn't really thinking of making any more because um, the reason I made it, first of all, was um, I actually, in the beginning of the year, I was going to write a song every day um, as like my New Year's resolution kind of thing. And the first song in the cheeseburger picnic album was the first song I wrote. Um, that fizzled out and I got tired of writing a song every day because I'm tired. <laughs> um, but... Uh, it was kind of just like a writing exercise to begin with, and it was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I, I probably will make more, because um, it, it was a lot of fun to do, but um, in terms of that, who knows. Um, uh, I am working on some newer, uh, some new stuff with uh, a couple different people. Um, one of them... I won't name who it is because I don't think he wants me to, to say his name, but uh, we're we're working on something that we've uh, tentatively called a, a power metal core album. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be some real cheesy <laughs> shit. Um, John Riley probably knows who I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> it's he he literally messaged me yesterday and was like, "I just want some fucking goofy ass synths and." power metal parts straight into minor minor second breakdowns <laughs> i was like all right dude whatever i'm fine with doing that um i actually heard um i forget who i think it might have been the robinson interview as well they were talking about they would write music by just rolling uh like D D dice <laughs> oh that's cool and, that real john cage shit and i, I just feel like a power metal <laughs> metal core a power metal core band it would be really cool to utilize that or actually even just play D and D and write songs about your campaigns. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally down with that. Get some LARPers in this game. <laughs> that could be your like instead of the pit, people just LARP. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so down with that actually. You could actually just name the band LARP because <laughs> that's a pretty sweet name. <laughs> I gotta check uh, last FM LARP. <laughs> LARP music. Oh, all right. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, with a uh, cheeseburger picnic, where did the name come from? I know that you said there was like no thought in it whatsoever, but <laughs> um, it's actually from a trailer bar trailer park boys episode. Um, oh, okay, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> that does make sense now. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there there was a cheeseburger picnic, and for whatever reason, that phrase just stuck in my head. Um. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, it's, it's Trailer Park Boys, normal shenanigans goes down. Um, I don't remember the exact contents of the episode, but I just thought it was a funny phrase. <laughs> right on. What were, um, like, some of your major influences when it comes to writing, not only this album, but in general? Um, so, for this album, I literally set out to just rip off the Great Redneck Hope <laughs> as accurately as I could. Success. Um, I it's it's hard to do that when you don't have like a real drummer and you're just kind of like writing, especially on like a, a click track grid kind of thing. But uh, the Great Redneck Hope is definitely a big influence. I definitely uh, love the Sawtooth grin a lot. Uh, let's see, see you next Tuesday is a huge influence as well. Um, Ion Dissonance was actually probably the first band of that kind of thing that I'd ever heard. Um, and uh, what's it called? Breathing is Irrelevant is an extremely important album for me. Right. Uh, yeah, so we've basically interviewed like every one of those bands. <laughs> which, I, 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 when you messaged me the first time, I went in your band camp and I'm just looking down the list and I'm like, Jesus, I love every single <laughs> one of these bands. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to answer a couple of these uh these yeah. comment questions. Cool. Uh, Mark, my favorite MySpace grand band is probably it's probably the Great Redneck Hope, but uh, a close second, was, which is what I was deciding between, is uh, Two O'Clock Girlfriend. Yes, definitely. Uh, 
Let's see what else. And goddamn um, you, Mark, for stealing one of my favorite questions that I wrote today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe, I didn't really play in any bands on Long Island. Um, I only was really in Long Island in high school, and uh, I didn't really I, like Suffolk County is just a hellhole of nothing. I'm surprised Cryptodier was even a band because they're all ridiculously talented people and just in the heart of Suffolk. Um, uh, let's see. My favorite. Describe my perfect cheeseburger. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I like a medium rare cheeseburger with caramelized onions and mushrooms. Um, a horseradish cheddar and a brioche bun. And that's that. Uh, and and a jalapeno. That's that's my favorite. Okay. Uh, let's see. Keith also asked, um, "Would you consider today I caught the plague power metalcore?" You know, I don't think I've actually listened to a lot of today I caught the plague. Um, <laughs> Drop some links for us, Keith. <laughs> did, did, are they the band that changed their name to something else and got signed to like Sumerian Records or something? I have no idea. But uh, that does lead, lead me to one of my other questions, and it's if you could be signed by any record label for Cheeseburger Picnic, what would you want to be signed as? I don't really know. Is that something uh, you would consider? If someone approached me and said, hey, we'll do this, um, and it was a reasonable deal, and I, uh, I yeah, I, sure, I guess, like... <laughs> That would probably mean that I would have to tour, which was is very I, I would love to um, if I had a real excuse to actually go out and tour for most of my life. I would totally do that for sure. That's been like one of my biggest dreams ever, and I have never been able to stick a band for stick with a band for that long to the point where we, I've never had merch made for anything I've ever done. I've never had a solid recording for anything I've ever done. We just it was all about just playing shows, and we'd just play like almost every weekend, but. It just sucks knowing that there's not one piece of tangible listening material still out there that anyone could ever listen to. It's a horrible feeling. But touring would be definitely amazing. <clears throat> Have you ever toured with any of the other bands that you were on in? Yeah, um, I've toured with uh, Monster Bad, which is a band from New York that I am kind of still in, but I'm just not in New York anymore. Um, and with Bonzo which is my, my shoegaze-type band from Ann Arbor. Yeah, I gave um, that a listen today as well. Um, I am into music that style, so it's not like I hated it, but mm -hmm. I'm just way more into, you know, that the MySpace stuff. I feel, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that I won't tell people I listen to, but there's a lot of stuff that I do listen to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the uh, Cheeseburger Picnic album, which one was the hardest one to play? Um, there, uh, uh, hmm, that's, huh, there was one, most of the riffs, so I am a bad person and I record most of my stuff just like riff by riff yeah. and just like do it over and over again until it's like. And, and and I do editing like I, I I like I mean I I uh, do audio engineering like I I'm very OCD about how I want my stuff to sound so like I I didn't like speed anything up on the album but like everything was pretty meticulously done and if I I really needed to get down and like do something in a silly way I did um, I don't know I guess none of them were particularly difficult for me to play when I was recording them, which is also like, I write as I, I record as I write. Um, all those songs were just written like a blank project file and I just, okay, I'll record this riff, I'll program the drums, now what? Um, <laughs> so, uh, if I were to play any of the, I've never played any of these songs all the way through. Um, really? And if I were to do, try to do that, that would probably be extremely difficult for me because I did not consider any of that when i wrote these songs Understandable. Um, um actually salt that's how the sawtooth grin said that they write all of their material 
mm. they write completely out of their capacity and have to become better and to, to play their own music. So, mm. I mean, I guess it's I mean, it's still a step in the right direction, you know. Yeah, no, I, I think that's t- totally a, a cool move to like just kind of disregard like in the writing process what you're you think you're physically capable of doing and just have to like really compensate if you have to pull it off live. I think that's a pretty <laughs> healthy habit as a musician to do. One band that never contemplated having to pull it off live was Job for a Cowboy. Because <laughs> I remember <laughs> I remember seeing them with... Um, I went to go see Psyopus, See You Next Tuesday, and um, Acacia Strain was there as well. And Job for a Cowboy was headlining the, the tour or whatever, and when I heard them, it was just... And give it, like, let it be known. I don't care who knows it. I was into Job for a Cowboy at the time, and it was decent. It was decent music. But what album were they touring on at the time? Uh, this was the uh, the the first one, the one with the entombment. Oh, the machine Doom. Right? Yeah, dude, that's sick. So like, I got I got to see that, but you can really tell that that album was basically written in a studio and he didn't comprehend that he was going to have to be doing two different types of vocals at one time. And it was going to sound wow. like complete garbage, but I don't know. Maybe somebody else caught a good show from them. Let me know in the comments. If that's the they're case. They're also like what? 18, 19 when they put that out. Yeah, they were, they were really young, young. But yeah. I mean, if you're going to sit there and you're going to watch, you're going to see like, see you next Tuesday, come up there and just absolutely melt faces. And then Psyopus comes up there and Chris Arp is literally bleeding on his guitar and then they're gonna follow up with like how is job for a cowboy fucking headlining this <laughs> like yeah it was, it was garbage <laughs> i guess and, that's kind of an unfair lineup for them but it was crazy because the whole myspace spiel like some of these bands just exploded and they they were writing like you like they were writing shit that they thought no one was really ever gonna hear or didn't care about and is just stuff that they wrote and put on the fucking internet and then next thing you know they're signed and touring the country like that's the dream yeah um also i don't know if christian's watching i don't know if i've seen him in the comments but christian dark trail records man come on Um, I would rather fight a horse-sized duck rather than 100 duck-sized horses. <laughs> See, that's that was our original "Would you rather" question. That's from our producer Josh, uh, and that was the original "Would you rather" questions. And now they're just frightening. <laughs> they're frightening. <laughs> so they're frightening to hear, honestly. I'm very down with that. So, um, yeah, I, I completely agree. We need a Debello revamp. Totally. Those fans are all so good. I would like... There's a lot of other record labels around at that time that were doing similar things, but for I can't remember them for the fucking life of me. Like, I remember following them all on MySpace and shit, but I just... I, it, I can't remember it. <laughs> I can't remember any of them but DeBello, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, so were any of your other bandmates in any other projects that anybody might know about? Um... <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you know John Riley? That's know. the only person I could think of. Uh, he was in Youth Novel with me. Um, I don't know if you listen to a lot of like the screamo type stuff. Um, um, I I used to a lot, and mm-hmm. I kind of I, I don't want to say I grew out of it because there's still some amazing bands. Like um, I posted a Jayuna song today in Scram Cave. Uh huh. And that. Like, I, I just had it in my head for some reason, and I was like, I really want to fucking listen to this band again, because I lost a couple pieces of vinyl in a breakup, and, like, have you ever heard Jayuna before? I think so. How do you... I, maybe I've just never heard it spoken out loud. How do you spell it? J-I-Y-U-N-A. They're from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I don't think so. IFB Records. Mm-hmm. Um, so... Have you heard of the band Merkit? No. Not at all? That's crazy. I thought they were way bigger than that. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, well, anyway, it, Fort Lauderdale used to have, like, a really prominent, like, screamy scene down there. And mm. it, there was a lot of great bands to come out of there. And 
Jaina was one of them. I highly recommend anybody listening to that. I actually just got an email from one of the dudes in the band, and I'm trying to find some vinyl from him. <laughs> um, so what was one of the best live performances that you've ever played? Um, so my first youth novel show, um, I also played... It was also the first show of mine with of a, of a band called uh, The Virgin Spring. And uh, The Virgin Spring was a real fucking goofy, like... It was... I don't, I don't know how to describe it, like, post-metal, like, shoegaze, but it, was, it wasn't good. I don't think any of us are <laughs> look fondly upon that band in retrospect, but uh, it, it, was a, it was a show party. Like, we had a party at our house, and we had two sets. Um, and I think the theme was Undead Wedding or something like that, and I wore a tuxedo to that show. Um, <laughs> and, it, like, the first... The first uh, like, it was the first youth novel set I'd ever played, and I'd never played in a band like that before. Um, just, like, Portraits of the Past type, like, sound. And it was probably the most fun I've ever had. Just, like, just real high-energy stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy playing with that band a lot. Um, I guess nothing really in particular happened at that show. <laughs> but <laughs> It's just a fond memory. Yeah, it was, it was a good show. Like, uh... It was it was nice. Um, a per, I guess uh, one thing I remember about playing any show in particular, uh, Youth Novel played with uh, the Saddest Landscape and uh, Empire Empire. I think the show was, and one of the guys from the Saddest Landscape comes up to us afterwards and and tell, tells us, "Hey, uh, you guys really remind us of uh, of Cowboys Become Folk Heroes," and I just thought that was a really cool thing to hear from the Saddest Landscape. But also kind of low-key means that we just scream a lot and are sloppy, <laughs> but I'm fine with that. <laughs> right on. <clears throat> Sorry, one second. Yeah. Yeah, you have a really good voice for podcasting, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it sounds like some smooth jazz. <laughs> um. So what were some of your favorite lyrics from the Cheeseburger Picnic? Or was it just all uh... screaming? <laughs> So, uh, I actually didn't write any lyrics for it, but, um, the last couple of weeks I'd just been going through and converging in some lyrics, mm -hmm. just listening to them over and over again, just writing what I, it sounds like I'm saying. Um. Which actually could be the best way to write lyrics ever, because they could turn out really funny. <laughs> yeah, I actually really, I'm really happy with how they came out, actually, and they're, I like them more than any lyrics I've written, just, like, with a pencil and paper, just, like, sitting down and trying to write lyrics. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that uh, Waking the Cadaver video that went around, that was, like, wheat, <laughs> shredded wheat. <laughs> That's way cooler than any lyric they could have ever written. <laughs> yeah, I'm prob they probably didn't write very many nice <laughs> lyrics, either. Yeah, that's the thing that about like, that, that guttural music. You don't, need, all really you don't gross need lyrics. Shit. Well, you don't need yeah. lyrics. You can just say what you think you're saying, and people mm -hmm. will think you're saying it. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of uh, a couple of the bands that I was in, I did like guttural vocals and like uh, kind of like devourment or something. And mm -hmm. it was just I didn't have one lyric. Like I, I, I wrote lyrics. slam is easy that way. You can just kind of <laughs> fuck around and do whatever you want. And... It'll, it'll fly. I wrote lyrics, and then it's like, uh, I'm holding these lyrics, and I'm like, standing with the band, and they write the song, and then they're all playing it for the first time together, and I'm like, trying to scream the lyrics, I'm like, this just doesn't sound right, I'm just gonna scream what I feel like needs to be scrammed. <laughs> That's <laughs> a scream. <laughs> and, Scrum it. <laughs> and just, that's how it's gonna turn out. Mm -hmm. But... It definitely works better in that way. Did you actually, did you anticipate the kind of reaction that you got from the Cheeseburger Picnic? I really had no idea. Like, I figured, like, my close friends, like, who I know enjoy this kind of music would like it. But, like, I, I really had no idea what to expect. And it's been nice. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, well, I, I can't complain. I heard about it from somebody who lives in fucking South Africa. <laughs> yeah, Tarquin, yeah, right? Yeah. That yeah. dude rules. Yeah, we actually just um signed him up to be one of the sheep dudes and he's oh, hell yeah. he's posting through our page now and he's gonna he's a an editor 
is what we've labeled it. <laughs> and <Nice. laughs> he's bringing a lot of good attention to our page, and I'm really happy with what he's been doing. Um, and I've also yeah, found, out, cool found out a lot of cool fucking bands from him already. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so what's what would you say it, hold on I'm missing a part of this question <laughs> alright so I know Mark already asked but what is your favorite band that you've ever found on MySpace uh, so here's the thing I really didn't go on MySpace that much I had one but I was maybe in like 6th grade Yeah. Um, and so I didn't really go on MySpace a whole lot and when I did like I was just really into Prague. Mm -hmm. um, so the one band that I'd probably listened to the most from MySpace was this band called Zara. Um, and they're just like this like genty symphonic band and they're real goofy, but I, I was really into that at the time. But in terms of like actual MySpace, that's, that's the only band that really stuck with me from that because I just wasn't really, I, I wasn't into that stuff yet. Yeah. Uh, I forget that everybody's not 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a baby. Um, so what's the best live performance you've ever witnessed with your own eyes or ever played? I think about this question like once a month, and I never really know what it is. <laughs> um, so do you know the band Bell Witch? Yes, I've heard of them. Yeah, um, they've played in this Long Island venue called Soul Sounds a couple of years back, which is this tiny little, like, record store. Um, they're a two-piece band, and it's a bassist and a drummer. They're like a funeral doom band. Um, they roll up with these enormous amps and just play one of the loudest sets I've ever... Just crushing, loud, real slow, just ridiculous, like, loud music. And I, I just kind of stood there in a daze for a good, like, 30 minutes. Um, and... Like I, I just thought it like their their sense of composition, and I thought it was just really cool. They had such a cool atmosphere, and I can't stress how loud it was for that tiny, tiny place. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I thought I thought that was really cool. Um, let's see. I, I had also a, I had a, a similar experience with a uh, a band called Jucifer. Have you ever heard of them? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen I, pictures of their live setup. That's crazy. If no one has ever heard Jucifer before. Um, you're not going to get the experience from listening on a computer, I'll tell you that. Um, but it's a two-piece uh, female guitar player and, vo player and vocalist and a uh, drummer. And they have a, literally a stack of just, like, old amps behind them, just, like, stacked on top of each other to the fucking it's, ceiling. It's a literal wall. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's it's not just like, oh, nice, you know, amps. It's just a bunch of shitty ones all strung together going and hooking up to only one fucking guitar. And it's literally, like, it's crushing. Like, and I remember it so well because they played all their songs straight through in, like, a medley. There was no talking or anything. So it was just, like, you're being bombarded with fucking noise for, like, like you said, like, 30 minutes. And then in one of the songs towards the end of their set, they have a pause in it. And in that one pause, you literally feel like your body, like, leaving itself. It's fucking crazy. It's like you can <laughs> breathe because you're not being hit with all this bass and shit. And Literal, just so much pressure. Yeah, coming, and it's, it was like almost a fucking religious experience. And I've gone back and I've listened to Juice uh, Juice for before again after that, and I was just like so disappointed because <laughs> I could hear, yeah I could hear what it sounded like, but then seeing it and hearing it live, I highly recommend if they come to your completely town, different stuff. experience. Yeah. But I'm sorry I interrupted you. What were you saying next? Uh, what was I don't remember. The question was best live performance, uh -huh. either played or um witnessed. Oh, I remember. Um, so there's this band called Palm. Um, they're what I can describe is just like the Beach Boys, but like really not really, and also like an actually good math rock band. Um, and they just like have some of the craziest compositions I've ever heard in my life, and their live performance is ridiculously powerful. It's just very, very flawless. Um, they have an audio tree session on YouTube, 
and I listen to that probably daily. They're probably some of the best live musicians I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, just extremely tasteful, like very, very powerful music. Um, they're a cool band. <laughs> uh, so since it's called the cheeseburger picnic, I take it, I take it you're not like vegan or vegetarian or anything? No, I'm not. Um, I probably should be because I eat a lot of meat and my cholesterol is probably uh, <laughs> through the fucking roof. I'm so. a 100% carnivore. I uh. I eat nothing but meat or bread and cheese. Like <laughs> that, That's it. I eat like a five-year-old. I love eating vegetables. <laughs> I just like, I also just like to eat a lot. And I have, I have I, like texture issues. Like. Mm-hmm. Anything with a strange texture is really... If it's not, like, deep-fried, I don't like it. It's super strange. <laughs> that real-ass American shit. <laughs> and, like, if I eat, like, a fucking grape, I'd throw up. I've literally never tasted, like, almost any vegetables, like, at all. Like, I, raw vegetables, I've never, like, just put one in my mouth and eaten it. That's crazy. I literally <laughs> don't understand that experience. <laughs> it's just... I don't know. It's it's. I don't know if it's, like, just set in my mind or whatever the fucking case i just can't do it it's so weird and and i'm not like one of those dudes that just like sits around and drinks fucking like energy drinks and doritos but i mean like i'll cook myself dinner or my fiance will cook me dinner and we it's really hard for her because she doesn't eat like me (laughs) but we have to come up with like a fucking you know a medium but uh yeah my, my question was what is your favorite gas station food it's the 7-Eleven hot dog with nacho cheese on it. Fucking excellent answer. <laughs> and I say I said that so quickly because it is something that I do eat pretty regularly. And I, I'm not proud of it, but I also love it. It's not something I can give up very easily. And I've gotten a lot of shit for it because it's very gross looking. Gas station nacho cheese is good at anything at a gas station. <laughs> Period. <laughs> yeah, you open up a bag of Doritos and pour some in. I, I used to get like uh you know how the, the nachos come in the little container with like the plastic lid mm-hmm. i would just take the lid and fill it completely with nacho cheese like a fucking pool of nacho <laughs> cheese and then I still this... put it on my chips oh god that's horrifying <laughs> and i would get uh i would get like 200 dollars a month in food stamps because i would i was homeless and i would <laughs> literally just like i would dip like candy bars in it like taquitos <laughs> like yeah, I'd get those uh, <laughs> pre-wrapped Italian sandwiches and just pour nacho cheese on it. It's Gotta so get good. those calories. <laughs> I could probably go without them at this point, but yeah. <laughs> now, uh, in high school, I knew this one girl who would just uh, would vomit every time she saw melted cheese. <laughs> just like couldn't deal with it at all. <laughs> Keith, <laughs> our buddy Keith just posted. Be careful. Mom paralyzed after eating gas station nachos. <laughs> I saw that not too long ago, and I was like, you know, that's pretty bad, but I don't think that's going to stop me. <laughs> if I was ever going to be paralyzed by something, it would definitely not be. God, dude, I have, like, a fucking iron stomach. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I think, uh, I think, what was it? It was some, it was some crazy, oh, it was a botulin, when the uh, <laughs> Botulinum toxin, whatever. Some crazy fucking neurotoxin or whatever that was in there. Yeah. Which is not normal for nacho cheese, so. Yeah. Actually, I went to the movies yesterday. Speaking of nacho cheese, I haven't had it in a while. And I was craving it. And I went to the movies and I didn't have any money. And I used my rent money to buy a movie ticket to go see Alien Covenant. Uh huh. Fucking amazing, by the way. <laughs> if any of my nerds uh-huh. are in here, let me know. Um, yeah. And I got up there and I found, because I fucking love pretzels too. And there's a pretzel bites that were covered in nacho cheese. And I was like, I want those. And then I ordered nachos as well. So I got like double the nacho cheese. It was amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So anyway, let's stop talking about nacho cheese. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't good radio. Uh huh. Um, So, what is, in your opinion, one of the best up and coming uh, Maffy, Techie, MySpacey, bands that are around right now um i really loved that uh second grade knife fight record i thought that was really fucking cool yeah i definitely uh, want to get them on the show mm-hmm. uh gift from god are good friends of mine they're fucking cool um what else came out recently 
I literally okay. found out about all these bands within the last like couple weeks. Like as soon as I asked you to be on the show, and then I posted that um, the thing on our page that said, you know, hey, if you're in a band, let us fucking know. And I went through there, and there's just so many good bands on that, on our page. It, it was it was kind of crazy to think that people were still making this kind of music. I'm, I mean, I knew it happened, but I didn't know at what quantity people were still making good music, which is always good to fucking find out. Yeah. And um, I, I have to say that I'm really fucking happy with our viewers. Like, good job, viewers. You guys <laughs> are putting out a lot of good stuff, and... I, I recommend everybody going and looking at that post after you get done watching this and searching through it because I think there was like 60 posts of people posting their band and I there might have been like two I didn't like. But <laughs> <laughs> not Name gonna names. Say, Which ones? I'm not going to say who it was. <laughs> <laughs> also... Uh, Brain Drill put out an album last year, which I appreciated a lot. And I can't believe they're still a band. There's a lot that I can't believe are still bands. It's kind of crazy. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, one thing Keith say, uh, suggested that we do is update bands Wikipedia's live on the show. Which <laughs> I think is a fucking great idea because there's a lot of shit on there that needs to be changed on a lot of these bands. <laughs> <clears throat> so... I got through about half of these half of these questions already. Uh, out of all the songs that you wrote, which one is your favorite to play? Um, well, I don't play any of these, but uh, <laughs> my favorite one is probably uh, uh, I don't know. Hmm. It's either uh, it's either the one about oh, with the song title that has both uh, in it, or uh. <laughs> Or Creation, which has the that did fun you say, break. Did you say end. Creation? I said Creation. <laughs> like the R and B singer or whatever the hell she is. She was she was just some rapper from okay. like <laughs> yeah five years ago maybe, and I was I, I didn't put any thought into any of these song titles. Um, but for whatever reason, for for whatever reason, she came to mind uh, when I was thinking of, of songs. So yeah, <laughs> right on. So um. <clears throat> so when I asked you, I asked if you would be okay with answering any questions about being trans. Yeah, that's still on the table. Yeah, go for it. Okay, because I don't know. It's nowadays it seems like such a touchy subject with a lot of people that mm -hmm. you know it's it's difficult to you know speak to people about it. So that's yeah, one of, that's one of the barriers I was trying to break with this interview as well. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, <clears throat> so. Has, uh, when did you find out or come to the real realization that you were trans? Um, so I came out publicly last year, um, maybe about a year and a month ago. Um, but it's always kind of been in the back of my mind, and like, I, I like was con, I became conscious of it, like, um, like maybe a month before I came out, um, but like, you, I grew up in this Long Island public school district, um, and it's just like very white, very just like, bit like very macho kind of guy mentality around everyone. Um, Did you say very white? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> okay. I was I was like the only Asian person in my school. Um, which was also pretty weird um and when you're in that situation you kind of like have to adopt a certain kind of you, you have to like internalize a certain racism yourself because everyone else like is saying dumb shit to you so you either have to embrace it and have friends you, or like pretty much yeah, yeah I and i i kind of had to deal with that for most of my life um but also, like, there was a lot of real gross, like, homophobia in that school. And, like, if there was any rumor that anyone was gay, it was immediately just like, oh, that person's gay. Fucking I'm just throwing around the F slur and shit, like, immediately. Yeah. And, um, if I had grown up in a less toxic environment, I probably would have realized it sooner. But I kind of had to just cram 
all that kind of stuff reeled down as far as I could, um, just for survival, really. Um, that's that's got to be pretty rough, honestly. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. I had a very <clears> poor <throat> uh, secondary school time, but um, whatever. I don't have to deal with any of those people anymore. So well, that's definitely <laughs> great. Um, so what? I, another question I wanted to ask was. So after coming out and accepting everything, like, and having other people accept it, do you feel like it's changed you musically? Do you feel like you're writing any differently or you can be more, you know, fluent in what you're doing? Or, you know, is there still, was there ever like a, like a barricade to that, you know, your writing style? You know, not really, actually. Um, I think... Music was really the only, like, I guess, pure expression that I've had, like, consistently throughout my life. Um, I listened not too long ago to a couple tracks from an album I put out in 2013, which was, like, right, uh, like, right when I graduated high school. And there's a song on that album that, like, I pretty much subconsciously rewrote for the Cheeseburger Picnic album. And, like... It, 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 I guess, like, I don't think it's ever really affected my music that much other than maybe, like, feelings of anger and frustration. But, like, I've never felt, like, in the past that I couldn't do something musically because, oh, this isn't masculine enough or this, is, yeah. this, is, this isn't something that corresponds to who I am. Um, I don't think I've ever felt that way before, which is nice. I am glad that I haven't felt that way. Yeah, I mean, in reality, there's not really... I mean, with this genre, like, it, it, there's not really some kind of, like, masculine glass ceiling or something, you know? It's like... And that's what's good about it. It's not, like, hardcore music or something, you know, where everybody just has to be tough and beat each other up and punch girls yeah. and stuff. like. Not my favorite thing. <laughs> um so uh have you ever found a like a positive trans influence in music um i did but it turned it later turned out that that person was not a very good person <laughs> which is uh disappointing to hear a lot of the times um, it's I don't really know that many trans musicians really at all which is also kind of a shame um, I know they're out there and I, I know like I've seen people talk about like tra like I'll, I'll go on like music groups on Facebook and there'll be threads like hey what are some cool trans musicians and I know there's plenty out there but they're just not very visible on the mainstream sense which, I mean, sucks, I guess. Um, but I, I guess that's just how that goes. Um, I mean, there, yeah, there I, is a lot of people who have, like, dabbled in feminin femininity and stuff. But, I mean, I guess there's yeah. just not anybody who's... I can think of that's just openly and outward. There, are, there are no, like... There's there's not, like, the, the commonly accepted, like, trans idol yeah. in the sense that there was, like... They're like what to the extent that like maybe David Bowie was like an early like maybe not adopter but like used that kind of aesthetic to really become his own distinct identity and yeah I, there's there's other stuff I can think of about David Bowie that I just don't go into right now but <laughs> uh, yeah it's, it's yeah I. I guess in terms of trans representation, most of the people that I know that are musicians are like DIY musicians that I also really respect because being a trans person in most DIY like hardcore scenes is fucking exhausting as hell, and uh, I really respect the hell out of a lot of those people for doing what they do. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like I I I book and play shows in my basement, but like. I just haven't really had the energy to go to many shows outside of my house because I just 
it's a lot of work going to shows and having to deal with like people i guess which kind of sucks that's kind of really that really is horrible like that sucks that you can't enjoy things that you would typically want to enjoy you know but i mean it is what it is i mean the world is what it is and sometimes the world is a very shitty fucking place Mm -hmm. so uh so have you found like musically it hasn't set any like barriers for you or anything that you need to get past or I don't think so. I, I've always been pretty confident in my ability to just, like, if I want to say or do something musically, I can just do it. That's awesome. And I've never really had any problems with that. And uh, my last question on this topic would be, if you had... What was it? Hold on. Like, do you have any sort of message to anyone else who could be going through the same things? What would it be? Um, it's hard. It's hard as shit. Um, everyone's transition is different. Everyone's experience is different. But there are also a lot of people like you who, if who who can, uh, like who are. I don't know. Like <laughs> it's. It's difficult because it's 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 diff- it's hard. It's very difficult to just like kind of exist a lot of the times and it's that's just kind of how it is for trans people. But um if there's any trans people listening, I love you. You're great for existing. Um keep on existing. And yeah, I I, I guess that's really all I can say. <laughs> so Maya says keep on existing. That's, that's the best uh, we can come up with here. <clears throat> so, uh, I asked you before we went live if you had any um, vinyl that you would like to share. Yeah, yeah, sure. I got a, this little pile right here. Uh, first thing I'd like to talk about right here is this uh, sender receiver plague, uh, plague Notes, which Fuck is yes. a, a Michigan, a real Michigan band. <laughs> um I've been trying to get Mark to get everybody together for a fucking sender receiver uh, fucking interview, but it seems to keep slipping through my fingers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, those, those people are all real busy most of the time, I'm sure. Um, especially with uh, Maxwell does most of the shows in the Detroit area and stuff. Yeah. So, that's, that's insane. I got I, I got this at their, their last reunion show, which was... Uh, that was a really cool set. I'm very glad I got to see that. Um, Do you get, have get the, s- the uh, capabilities to make that into a tape? Um, I don't know. I would love I, a copy of that. <laughs> uh, is Mark still watching? Did, yeah, were there ever is. tapes of this made? I don't know. Um, if anyone would know, it's... I mean, them, I guess. you could. Or Mark, if you know, you can slide some of that vinyl over. (laughs) That'd be really cool, Yeah, I'm sure they probably still have copies, just, like, in some box somewhere. Um, But, yeah. Now, this this is a really cool record, and I'm very glad I got to see them. I remember finding them early, early on in, uh, on MySpace, and have actually listened to it since, since about then, so. uh, Yeah. It's been a long haul for, uh... (laughs) Yeah. Send a receiver. Um, I guess next is a uh, copy of the Northless Light Bear. The light in this room is really bad, <laughs> but uh, the Northless Light Bear split. Um, Northless is like a sludge band from Milwaukee, and Light Bear is uh, I think they're like a British like neo cross band. And I like, I like Night Bear. I love Night Bear. But the Northless side of this is, like, some of the most perfectly written, just, like, super, like, well-done sludge I've ever heard in my entire life. Right on. Um, me and my friends used to sit in this, uh, my friend's room just, like, very regularly to sit down and listen to this album. And I just had very fond memories of, of this record. Um, yeah. Northless Light Bear split. 
That's one of the um, amazing things about music is it's not even really about the music sometimes. Sometimes it's about the place you're at you're in your life, yeah. you know, and it's just like you can instantly listen to something and it'll take you right back to that. It's amazing. Yeah, for sure. Um, here we got the the repress of the City of Caterpillar LP, which uh, I picked up when they... No, I actually pre-ordered this, but I did go and see that when they reunited and they came through Detroit. I actually found uh, out about that like a week after it happened and wanted to come. Uh, out. <laughs> it was so good, man. The City of Caterpillar was is probably my favorite, just favorite screamo band overall. Like the selfie is like I think just a masterpiece of the genre. Um, it's good to hear somebody say that. That's like it's not page ninety nine. <laughs> like that's just everyone's everywhere. Um, staying on that Screamo train for a sec is uh, the Straka Death, Deathless um, Richmond, Virginia band uh, that, that same crowd of uh, people who run in that Gift from, Gift from God cost crowd um, really great like post metal Screamo album um, one of the most cohesive Screamo albums I've ever heard in my life um Came out a couple of years ago and blew everyone away. Um, I got the uh, the Daughters self-titled right here, which I know isn't everyone's favorite Daughters album. Um, Still peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> I mean, Daughters is like this this self-titled LP. I think is just one of the the hardest hitting albums I've ever heard. Like it's it's not it's not like any of the other releases like in really any sense, but yeah. Well, I mean, each okay. one is extremely individual. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I, I, this is just like, I almost think this is like a pop metal album. <laughs> and like, it's just like, in terms, even just production wise, it's so just like dense and powerful. And, and like, I, I would love to hear those songs performed live. And oh, also yeah. other daughters songs because they're fucking great. I'm actually seeing them uh, June 2nd in Detroit. I'm very excited about that. What's your favorite daughter song? Uh, probably, and the Chuds came in off of uh, I almost said off of the second one. Uh, Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my favorite is Jones from Indiana off the same. Yeah. Same one. That's a really fucking great album. Um. Yeah. So, I got uh, the Boys Life LP Departures and Landscapes, which is a. Uh, an emo band, like a 90s emo band, um, just like that kind of soft indie rock emo type kind of thing, um, which I don't listen to a whole lot anymore, but I think of any of the bands that did it, I think Boys Life did it best. Just like some really, really incredibly written songs, just some really beautiful buildups and and, and like climaxes in this album. Um, they did a reunion tour a couple of years back and they played like four dates, one of them which happened to be in Ann Arbor. Um, and I got to see him in this like relatively small venue called the Blind Pig um, with like maybe 20 people in the room. And it was so cool. Um, that was that was actually one of the best shows I've ever been to as well. Um, just some really great stuff. Um, and I guess lastly, I have an album called Belir de that it's, it's, in, it's in Turkish. I don't know. It's the Turkish band called She Passed Away. Passed with a T. That's how you know they're Turkish. But um, they're like a uh, they're they're I can just I guess I could describe them as like New Order in a freezer in like East Europe. They're just like that really like cold, dark sounding uh, post punk type stuff. Um, and it's just like you know, look at these guys. They're they're so goth. Look at them. <laughs> um, and uh, it's I think it's just like a perfect execution of that style. Just like really catchy, goofy songs, but also just like very, very goth, like ridiculously goth. <laughs> um, the the vocals are all just this one dude, like kind of just babbling in Turkish. I mean, 
I, that's probably not nice, a nice thing to say, but it really like it, <laughs> one song. He literally just sounds like he's saying "goo goo 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 gaga," which is but that's probably messed up. <laughs> like I'm sorry, but uh, but yeah, that's it's it's really great stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, proceeding forward, we're gonna do the "Would You Rather" questions. Okay, cool. And that was cemented by the fact that. Keith just secretly messaged me out of comments and gave me about 10 <laughs> would you rather questions. Oh dear. Okay. <laughs> so you can thank Keith for these ones. I'm pretty sure he pulled them on Reddit or something. Um, uh, he said, and also uh, answer along in the comments because I think it would just be funny to see everybody's reaction to these. <laughs> and, you know, I want to see what everybody has to say. So. Would you rather get explosive diarrhea every time you meet your boss or every time you meet, you meet your significant other's parents? Probably every time I meet my significant other's parents because whenever that happens, they don't talk to me anyway. So, <laughs> so you can just shit all over <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> just give me another reason to leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a head the size of a tennis ball or the size of a watermelon? The size and shape, I assume, right? Yes. Hmm. So you could be Harry I guess Arnold the si or Beetlejuice with a shrunk. I don't know. I guess it would just be safer to have a head the size of a tennis ball. <laughs> but, like, probably a little more acceptable for it to be the size and shape of a watermelon. So safety conscious. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, you, you got a big head like that, it's probably... I, I, I can't imagine, like, what kind of... Like just walking around like stuff that hits you and shit. I guess I'd I guess I'd wanna have the tennis ball head just out of safe <laughs> Would you, would you rather peel off all of your nails or or peel all the nails out of your fingers or pull all your... the teeth out of your mouth? <laughs> That's like a fucking Saul question, Keith. I hate that shit. I hate that body heart of body horror shit. Oh god. Uh, I, and I'm doing it. Like yeah, it's not someone else doing yourself. it to me. Uh, I guess the nails, just because it'd probably be a little less bloody and painful, and they'll grow back, I suppose. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh goddamn. Uh, Would you rather pee silly string or fart confetti? Be a silly string. <laughs> that was a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could make it in the porn industry with that as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> would, you, <laughs> would you rather age from the neck up or the neck down for the rest of your life? <laughs> I guess. Jesus. <laughs> really, you're really hitting the hard questions. Uh, I guess neck up. Well, no, because that's the brain. Yeah, I don't know, I guess. Either way, it's going to be bad. Because <laughs> it's either that's, the brain or literally everything else. So. That's usually uh, behind every one of these questions. <laughs> either way, it's yeah. going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess neck down, because that's probably how it's going right now anyway. <laughs> um, <clears throat> would you rather have... Um, would you rather have Cheeto fingers, not like Cheetos that are fingers, but Cheeto dust like on your dust. fingers yeah. all the time, or an infinite drip of pee? Infinite drip of pee. <laughs> um, there are a few things I hate more than having, like, just... The, like <laughs> tangibly dirty hands like i just i can't function if there's just shit on my hands it's just it's 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 uh. <laughs> would you rather have arms for legs or legs for arms arms for legs for sure <laughs> uh, like that would that's just functional i can do more stuff <laughs> imagine the guitar solos <laughs> Get one of those, get two of those Michelangelo. No, you, the Michelangelo audio had like a quad guitar or something. Like that. You, could, you could just be up there playing all four at the same time. You could actually 
do a cheeseburger picnic show all to, at one time because that's you can my, play that's, drums and that's guitar. a fucking dream honestly <laughs> i wish i had four arms i wouldn't need anyone else ever <laughs> um would you rather shower in fish tank water for the rest of your life or have raisins for fingernails raisins for fingernails <laughs> <laughs> i take my showering very seriously <laughs> i'm not here for that <laughs> um so you can only listen to one band for the rest of your life, but it has to be Nickelback or ICP. Oh, hmm. Which do I like more? <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I enjoy both of those on a very goofy level. Like, because ICP, I list, like, you listen to it just, like, to hear some fucking dumb bullshit. Um, and Nickelback is just, like, it's the butt rock band. Like, yeah. no one did butt rock like Nickelback did. It's just um, like when South Park makes fun of butt rock, that's exactly what you hear. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> I guess Nickelback, because they, they, they just have more music, I think, don't they? I think Nickelback <laughs> has something like eight or nine albums. I think ICP had a lot of albums, too. I know there was, a, there was a lot of Joker cards. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> probably right. I don't know as much about ICP as I do about Nickelback. I, <laughs> I'm not really from Michigan, so... <laughs> So, would you rather fight a teenage bear or three ostriches that are on cocaine? The teenage bear. You don't fuck with ostriches, man. <laughs> oh, damn. Uh, would you Would you rather your mom or dad catch you masturbating or you catch them? Them catch me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna go further into what I was just thinking, but okay. <laughs> Would you rather have your body found on a pile of sex toys or naked pictures of Guy Fieri? There's a difference. <laughs> uh, um, I guess the Guy Fieri pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather have a 10 inch long belly button that swayed to music or accordions for legs accordions for legs oh my god <laughs> that would be incredible <laughs> that'd be one hell of a polka party <laughs> <laughs> would you rather have a vagina for armpits or an armpit between your legs probably an armpit between the legs <laughs> <laughs> no knees or no elbows <laughs> No knees, I guess. I need elbows, but I, eh, I guess no knees. <laughs> okay, would you... I feel <laughs> stiff all the time. <laughs> would you rather cut off one of your own fingers, which is hard because you're a guitarist, or pay $5,000 of your own money for the person you hate most to go on vacation? I'd probably just cut off one of my fingers. <laughs> That's that's definitely my answer. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't want to give any money to that person at all. Um, would you rather live forever or die in the next five minutes? <laughs> I'd probably just rather live forever. I guess <laughs> it would be pretty awesome to see someone die on my show, <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't want you to die. So <laughs> I'd rather not right now. <laughs> Okay, you have to fuck one, marry one, and kill one. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Steve Buscemi, Danny DeVito, and the lead singer of Smash Mouth. Okay, fuck the lead singer of Smash Mouth. Uh, marry Steve Buscemi, kill Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito's amazing. <laughs> I uh, sorry, I guess. <laughs> I mean, he was just—he was just the lowest on that list of three people. I don't particularly have strong opinions he on was, any of them. He was the <laughs> shortest. <laughs> I suppose that is also true. Um, would you rather sweat milk or grow blue cheese as plaque on your teeth? I guess it's easier to brush your teeth all the time than <laughs> yeah, than shower. Yeah, I guess the blue cheese. Die on the Titanic or in the World Trade Center? Probably in, in the World Trade Center because I don't like the idea of drowning at all. <laughs> yeah. Drowning um, sounds like it's a real bad time. You ha you're forced to drink one. 
your mom's breast milk or your dad's urine? My dad's <laughs> urine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's it. Uh, you made it okay. through. <laughs> you made it through. All right. <laughs> Everybody in the comments, give her congratulations. <laughs> um. So, let me see here. Let me get this my bearings together here. What's one of the weirdest places you've ever played a show? Um. Let's see. Um. One of the first shows I ever played was this place called the Rose Theater. And it sounds like a real classy spot, but it was just this, this, like, part of an industrial complex. Like, just, like, a business industrial complex. And it was, like, very hastily thrown together to be a theater. Um, and it, it, one thing about the particular venue was really weird, but just, like, the people who ran it, like, were just really bizarre. Um... I don't know. Like they, they clearly like threw the show, but they didn't seem to have any intention of having a show there. Um, also, it was just like a very bizarre place, um, just in Long Island, um, just kind of out in, in the middle of nowhere in particular. Like, no shows were probably in that town ever. Um, that was just, that was just a weird show in general because it was also just booked very strangely. Um, but uh, where else? Uh, I played a show, um, oh, in Ohio, I played a show with my band Monster Bad when we went on tour, um, and our friend booked it for us, and it, she's really great, um, but she booked it for us in this, like, recreation building at this, like, apartment complex, <laughs> and there was, like, a pool out back, I was, it wasn't open, but, like, it was just, like, in this room, um, and there was like a Blink One Eighty Two cover band or some shit. Like, okay, this is wacky, but uh, yeah, that was that's that was a weird show. Mark said that ICP has over thirty albums. Do they really? Holy shit! <laughs> I fuck with that. <clears throat> oh yeah, there was one more. It was a desert island question. Cool. You have to listen to one album for the rest of your life. Bring one type of food and one item. One item? Yeah. Um, so the crazy. album would be Metallica Ride the Lightning. <laughs> because that is indisputably my favorite album of all time. And I'm sure if you're on an island alone listening to Metallica, you could still party. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, I have a very strong fondness for Metallica. They're like my first favorite band. Um, and Ride the Lightning was an extremely important album. But, uh, Let's see. It was favorite, uh, one food, right? Mm -hmm. Probably gas station hot dogs with nacho cheese. <laughs> I would die in twenty four hours. <laughs> um, probably just French fries or just any fried potatoes. <laughs> Assorted fried potatoes. Yeah, just give me fried potatoes and some kind of sauce, I guess. <laughs> and what would be your item? Just anything like. Somebody once said a gold Master P tank, <laughs> and that they would listen to ICP. Oh, while they hit it. that's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh man, I don't know if I have any better answers than that. Um, it doesn't have to be something you own. <laughs> trampoline. Trampoline. <laughs> yeah, I look I look back in my room and I'm just like, ah, You're things, like, things. <laughs> uh, there's no trampoline in here, and that would be awesome if there was. <laughs> I would like a trampoline. Uh, so you'd bounce on a trampoline and listen to Metallica all day. That sounds while, like a good time. While eating fried potatoes. <laughs> uh, I really can't ask for anything more. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, there was one other one, sorry. Pubic hair for teeth, or teeth for pubic hair. Oh, <laughs> I guess pubic hair for t no. I don't want either of those. Oh God. Yeah, that one's difficult. <laughs> I don't like that one. I guess teeth for pubic hair, <laughs> mainly because it's less obvious. But <laughs> yeah, I guess you could. Yeah. Although I think it would be pretty gnarly to have teeth pubes i just wouldn't want hair in my mouth all the time <laughs> that sounds like a bad time oh jesus 
Um, what's the worst injury you've ever seen at a show um, inflicted to yourself or anyone else? Hmm. I haven't really seen that many injuries at shows, mainly because I don't really go to hardcore shows. Um, but, uh... Hmm. I, had, I thought of something, like, that was related, but I forgot. Uh, what the fuck? Um... Something happened. Um, wow, I I literally was thinking of it and I just forgot. <laughs> so, um, uh, do you want to do like? Uh, you said that you went on tour with one of your bands. Yeah, I went on tour a couple times with uh, Bonzo and Monster Bed. What was one of the coolest places you got to see on that tour? Um, so <laughs> when we went on the la the last Bonzo tour we went on, we went up to Vermont because uh, our singer slash guitarist is from Vermont. Uh, we stayed at his parents' house. And uh, we went skiing while we were there <laughs> because <laughs> he lives, like, right next to a ski resort and, like, got some discount or something. Um, and, yeah, we, we went skiing on tour. It was great. I ha It was, like, it wasn't, like, the conditions were really bad and icy, but, like, we went fucking skiing. Like, who goes skiing on tour? Um <laughs> Yeah, that was a fun time. Um, let's see. <clears throat> um, I have very fond memories of uh, playing in Philly on our first tour with Monster Bad. And uh, my friend Jorge shotgunning a sparkling water. <laughs> Just a, a can of sparkling water. Um, that's, that's one of my favorite things I've ever seen. Jorge knows how to uh, party. He fucking does. They fucking <laughs> do, yeah. <clears throat> so what did you tour in? Was it a van? Uh, no. Uh, we just had our cars that we toured in. Um, we, we were gonna have a van, um, but that got sold for some reason at the last second. <laughs> um, oh wait, let's, uh, uh, Dave Matthews has a would you rather question. Would you all rather always smell like popcorn, or, or the only place you could go to the bathroom was Bed Bath and Beyond? <laughs> Why do I feel like there's an inside joke in that? You know there isn't, which is surprising <laughs> because that's usually what he always talks to me. Yeah, not inside jokes, but just dumb bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess. Says, Holy fuck, Dave Matthews is in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck you, Dave. Um, I guess I'd rather always smell like popcorn. It's not like an offensive smell, I guess. <laughs> Who doesn't like popcorn? I hate popcorn. Really? Oh, dang. Caramel corn and kettle corn is dope, though. <laughs> yeah. No, that's real. Also, smart food. Like that <laughs> white cheddar smart food. Oh, yeah. Popcorn. That shit is good, too. I fuck with that. I just hate the feeling of having shit in my teeth. It's pretty horrible. Yeah, when, like, a bit of a kernel gets stuck in your teeth, like, that's the worst. <clears throat> so, um, I guess... Uh, do you have any anything else interesting about what happened on tour or any like funny stories or anything you'd like to share? Um, anything that just jumps out at you? One time we were in the car and there was a rainbow that came out uh, in the sky after it was raining. <laughs> and we were just like, oh, look, there's a rainbow. I was like, yeah, God's gay. And then it instantly disappeared. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that was a he got a guy got real pissed at me for calling him gay. So I guess <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, God. <laughs> Eric asked, "Would you rather listen to Degent or Bad Prog?" Uh, you have to uh, <laughs> I guess Gent, because <laughs> Bad Prog is bad, <laughs> and most Gent is pretty bad, but there is some good Gent. <laughs> And I Dan suppose. says, I saw you eat popcorn last night, Nick. Yes, Dan, you did see me eat <laughs> some popcorn last night. But it was because it was the <laughs> only food that was available. In you, front also, of me. <laughs> you also ate Nick. <laughs> and um, Keith said, popcorn gets stuck in your pubic teeth. That's true. It's hard getting that shit out. <laughs> Alright, so um, do you have anything that you want to plug or any uh, links you would like people to check out? Um, I guess really the only link I got is my Bandcamp, which is musicisreallydumb.bandcamp.com. Um, I think it's in the event page for 
the it's it's where the cheeseburger picnic album is all the stuff i've ever released is on there um you can go way back and see the album i released when i was 15 um it's very silly um but <laughs> feel free to listen to it i guess what was uh, the uh planned parent her uh, planned parenthood benefit Oh, yeah. So that was a comp that I organized, like, right after Trump got elected. Mm-hmm. Um, there was, I mean, he's he talks about trying to axe Planned Parenthood like every other fucking day. Um, and so I put together that, um, had a lot of really cool uh, people of color and, and LGBTQ people um, on that comp. There's also a zine in it, too. It's like a PDF um, that comes attached to the download. Um, had some really had this really cool poet, um, one especially C. A. Conrad, who's like a pretty uh, like substantially, uh, I guess, famous uh, poet, uh, uh, a queer poet from California. And I was really excited that that uh, I got a poet of theirs, a poem of theirs on on the zine. Um, but yeah, it was. Like just it was really nice to see just immediately in the wake of election that people were still creating music how they wanted to and yeah still making art. Um, <clears throat> Can people still purchase that? Yeah, um, it, I haven't had anyone purchase it in a while, but I've donated all the money that I've gotten um, from it to uh, Planned Parenthood Federation of America, um, and we raised like I think. Three hundred dollars or so um, for it when like it came out in the first couple of weeks. That was cool. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. <clears throat> well, okay, my I don't think I have any other questions for you unless you have anything else you'd like to share. Um, I guess nothing particular comes to mind. Um, uh, <laughs> hi everyone. <laughs> Okay, well, um, well, we are, we do do a giveaway for everybody who we who comes on our show. We ask if they have anything that they could send us, and if it's possible to, if you have anything laying around from any of your past projects or anything that we could put into our giveaway for any of the fans that have watched tonight. Uh, actually, um, there, I I'm working with uh, my friend. Do a one of those over to you, or a couple of those over to you. All right, you have um, to, you have to you repeat, get one of those. Over. You have to repeat that again because you turned into a robot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah I think people are watching Twin Peaks in the in the room over, so there's probably some uh, some data loss going on. But uh, I'm working with my friend Kyle um, to do a tape release of the Cheeseburger Picnic album. Excellent. Um, and I could send a couple of those over to you whenever that gets done, which I, I'm not really sure when that's going to happen. But uh, I mean, it, yeah, anything's cool. Um, Mark says the Jerome's Dream Comp. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I don't have those. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think that that would, uh, that probably wouldn't make it to the giveaway. <laughs> I'd probably just yeah. keep that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, my, my friend John Riley is... Uh, kind of headed that thing, um, and he's got a bunch of copies of it. <laughs> so if you really like, go ahead and I could probably send one of those to you um, as well. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so I guess my last question is, what would be, what is the highlight of your musical career? Like, what is that like? Oh shit! Moment where you just feel like you've done something that was substantial. <sighs> um. Hmm. I'm not really sure, um, because when I was really young, like 15 or 16, um, I put out that album that I mentioned earlier, it was like a four-song Gent EP, and uh, this guy who ran a label called Rogue Records America approached me about it and asked me to sign to the label, and I was like 16 at the time, and I was like, wow, this is crazy, like, like I, I <laughs> I, I I'd assume like that's what I wanted to do, because um, like, like I had no idea what else you could do in music, um, and so I signed, and that was actually kind of a pretty bad time. Um, 
it, it's not like I got like shafted out of anything, but like it just didn't really, I didn't really get a whole lot out of it. Yeah. Um, it was just not a very well run company, and I think it's, I think they qu- quit doing it not too long ago. <clears throat> um, but uh, you know, I I don't really know. I guess like. Youth Novel was a pretty popular band, but I never really felt like I was hugely a part of it because I joined like after um, it like started getting big and the the songs that everyone loved. If I hadn't, I didn't have anything to do with any of them. Um, so I don't really know like what it's <laughs> gonna be that like that makes me feel like oh this is something cool that I'm really doing. Like touring definitely was like I love to just go out and travel and play a show every day like i love touring like if if i was regularly touring i'd probably feel like this is what i want this is what i am doing and i i feel great doing that i've only gone out tours like one week or like 10 days at a time so i don't really know like i guess i i started working um as like an audio engineer like having audio jobs which is like my i I guess that's my main thing i i I record in a mix and i like to work in audio fields and being actually employed by like a student like a university studio was was really cool and i got a lot out of that um but i don't really know i i I haven't felt like i've made it or anything yet yeah. like i still feel like i have a long way to go on a lot of things um which is good and bad like i think there's still a lot i can learn and still a lot that i have to left to do which is cool well maybe it but will be when christian scary. signs you to dark trail records <laughs> cough cough christian <laughs> What the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> we need more cheeseburger picnic, Christian. <clears throat> yeah, Which would also be the... really cool because the worry guys are, you know, doing stuff with Christian as well. Uh, actually, oh, yeah. I don't know if I was supposed to say that. I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> Christian, I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe we'll have that second grade knife fight, the cheeseburger <laughs> picnic split, Jonah. Yeah, that, that I be... think he's commented a couple times this That'd time. That would be sick, too. <laughs> Uh, Dave Matthews asked one more question if you want to feel that one. I don't see it, so you're going to have to ask it for me. Um, he said, here's another. Uh, would Another would you rather for the rest of your life. The only TV shows and video game you could watch or play is The Simpsons or the only clothes you could wear for the rest of your life is... Holy shit, this is long. Is Hurley. Sorry. <laughs> Well, I already mostly already watched The Simpsons anyway, so probably that. And The Simpsons video games are pretty fun. Yeah, the arcade game was amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, that arcade game is legendary. And I would never wear Hurley, so <laughs> I would go yeah, to Simpsons. Yeah, no, I, as well. that, that was a bad question. Fuck you. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. Ex- I wouldn't expect anything better from Dave Matthews. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Maya. I really appreciate no it, and I hope this hasn't been as awkward as you probably suspected it would be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had a good time. Oh, this has been fun. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And you know, thanks for doing this. And I'm absolutely grateful that I got to stumble across the Cheeseburger Picnic album <laughs> and meet you via the interwebs, cy- yeah. cyber hang, or right, if you will. <laughs> Hell yeah! But um, yeah, I'll be in touch and have a good night. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that went well. And since since Dylan's not here to say it, she was so nice. Such a nice person. Um, <clears throat> so, are we still... Am I still alive or did I screw that up somehow? Yeah. I think... Yeah, I'm still alive. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't really have much other news for you guys, and like I said, if you dig the videos, if you like what was going on, then go to YouTube, subscribe, you'll be entered in all of our giveaways till the dawn of time, and unless the comments have anything to add, I don't think I have any more reason to keep you guys. So, uh... 
I haven't really been doing much since the last time you guys saw me. I did happen to beat my Kava record, which is now 56 shells, which I'm going to try to enter it into Guinness Book of World Record so somebody can beat it very shortly. <clears throat> um, yeah, I have nothing else to add, and go fuck yourself, San Diego.